Hi, I'm Meg. First of all, just how was rehearsals, by the way? Intense. Um, we we did, it, but amazing. We did some really um, in-depth looks at lots of different areas, particularly World War One and a PTSD aspect. And we really um, got into the characters and, um, but they were emotionally draining at, at some time. Can you find? Definitely. We went really deep into the characters so that we're not just playing a, a version of, for example, Killian Murphy's Tommy or, you know, um, Helen McCrory's Helen Polly. McCrory's Polly, like that we brought the characters to us and then also what they're like in a theatrical setting because mm. obviously they are really bold characters in the show, but translating that to the stage, I think, was what we yeah. kind of did in rehearsals. Yeah. With lots of... Yeah. And lots of movement. Lots of movement. And, and yeah. singing and and games. And what was lovely was that it was a great opportunity for us to really bond as a cast. It felt like a true ensemble, um, which is really what you need when you're doing immersive. Um, it really is a team effort. I mean, all theatre and, and film and TV is the same, but particularly with immersive, you all need to trust each other and know each other and love each other and we really f feel that and some of the feedback we've had already is that you can really feel that when when you're out on the floor. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourselves and the characters that you play for um, Peaky Blinders Arise. Um, so I play Grace Burgess who is um, the love interest of Tommy um, and I also so play a character called Zilpha Lee, who um, is not as big a character in the show, but in the at the start of the show, I read palms and I kind of bring that sort of mystic, uh, what would you call it? Like um, all ethereal, all-seeing element of Peaky Blinders. So the that's, Romany, the Romany, the Romany yeah, yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. So that's really fun. And then Grace, um, at this point in the series, she's gone to New York and come back and met with Tommy um, and then she arrives with something very important to tell him um, so yeah that's that's really it's really fun to explore her kind of uh, posture and um, directness uh, and also finding the fun in her because in the show she's obviously working in season one and she's often got a lot going on in the show but in this show she actually does have a lot going on but I get to play music and I get to explore her like singing element as well and kind of like, yeah, all of that um, aspect. Of awesome. um, and I'm playing, uh, I'm, I'm Emma and I'm playing uh, Polly Gray, who is the matriarch of the Shelby family. She's the um, company treasurer as well. Um, and she's an incredibly fun character to play because she's an anarchist there's a real mm. punk inside her <laughs> and she can get away with a hell of a lot more than I could in my day-to-day -day life and um she's intelligent and vibrant and powerful but incredibly vulnerable so it's really nice to play those two dichotomies and and um where we're at in in the show is that her son Michael has come back um, he's, he was taken away from her by the parish when he was two weeks away from being six. He's come back to her and it's his 18th birthday. And so she's um, she's sort of torn because she's loving having him back, but she doesn't want the Shelby boys, Arthur, John and Tommy, to lead him astray. And she has to make that decision as to whether they allow him to be part of the family or to take him away and um so it's a really interesting time to find Polly there's a lot she's got a you know big life decisions to make but I just I can have so much fun with her. and when I'm back in the audience I say things I can be quite cheeky <laughs> and I'm really interested in what comes out you know you can't with with immersive you can't there's certain scripted elements but that you, there's a lot of it yeah. which is improv and, it, and it's what the audience give you so something Tom said throughout rehearsals Tom's the director is that the audience is one of the biggest characters in the mm -hmm. show. So in a way, there's things that you can plan and think that you might want to say, but when someone comes to you and they're really in it, you know, lots of people dress up 
um, and they they give you something, an offer, or perhaps they've been sent on a mission or something, and they've come to tell you something. They surprise you, and I think that's one of the most wonderful things about the show. That yeah, you're just constantly surprised about what you you come out with. Oh, things. I give such like cheeky retorts yeah, and move on, and, and <laughs> it's lovely. And I'm still very much early into the run, so very uh, you, you know each show brings up something new. So yeah. Do you ever get like nervous about wondering maybe if you're taking things too far with the character or if there's like any boundaries that you need to be aware of throughout the immersive experience with the audiences? I think my main concern is keeping the authenticity of the character and not necessarily resorting to comedy, which is a sort of, I think, an easier choice. Mm -hmm. And so there's, there is a certain amount you can have, um, a certain amount of, of work you can have done beforehand in preparation. But I think we've, because we've worked so hard on the characters and keeping, you know, the integrity of them all and keeping that sort of grittiness that y- you see on a TV show, you can sort of feel when it's being stretched. And actually, so far, touch wood, the audiences have been very respectful. Yeah. And... Um, it's amazing. They get so swept up in it and so excited to be having um, an exchange with a character and being as, treated as part of the story. But actually, so far, it's been it's quite exciting to feed off their their energy and their um, their their excitement. There's almost like a childlike quality yeah, to, to a lot of the definitely. audience members. I think also there's really clear boundaries as well that are set out at the start of the show. And, and we also have clear boundaries as to what is acceptable and unacceptable behaviour. So I think everyone, and we had comments from our audience members saying they felt really safe. We've got security teams. So although we are in the dangerous world of Peaky Blinders, it's maintained in a very safe way. Like all of the danger is managed and um, yeah, touch wood, yeah, touch really, wood. really kept yeah. an eye on. And yeah, yeah so I think we feel safe and audiences have also told us that they feel really safe in the world. And were either of you fans of the television series, you know, prior to auditioning for this, to, for the roles that you've played? And um, did, did anything you picked up on while watching TV series help you in like, you know, auditioning? Yeah, I loved, I loved the show from when it first came out. And I've always been a massive fan of Helen McCrory. Mm. And Polly was, she's just a, such a, fabulous strong female older woman role and as a woman in her 40s as an actress in her 40s seeing a strong female portrayed um in a in a different way in a in a sort of dangerous way who who she is respected she's not treated as the bitch which seems to be the default quite often oh she's an older woman so she's powerful so she has to be a bitch and I you know it's it's uh, so I'm quite, yeah. um, so I always, yeah, I always thought, wow, that's an incredible role played by an incredible actress. So what a privilege for me to um, try and translate that onto stage. Yeah, I, so I actually had only really heard about it through people saying it's amazing. It was one of those series that I've been like, oh, I must watch that. Mm-hmm. And then um, the audition came up for Grace and I, I watched the whole first series like that. Um, before my audition and I just was so interested in the characters and the world and just the 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 power dynamics particularly for Grace that first series her journey and her um the way that she handles herself and carries herself um yeah I I just found it really exciting and have then gone on to watch the series Mm. quite quickly um but yeah I, I, I wasn't a huge fan but it made the world made sense to me straight away and um yeah and for people who sorry people who haven't seen the show so friends of mine have come to see the show and they have loved it in itself and and have Mm -hmm. then gone on to say oh they've texted me like oh I'm watching series one now and I'm so excited like your character's doing this I'm like yeah I know (laughs) yeah um it's nice also yeah once we we knew we were going to play the roles to revisit it and there's so Mm -hmm. much gold in each series that you can then use we've got permission to to, to use the, the, the you know um not necessarily the attitude or whatever but it, it's it's certain the the script is so fabulous mm. so i'll go oh i'll have that I'll have yeah that. and, and so, things come to you yeah. in the moment it's what the other day i was doing a toast in the bar and i did the 
grace maybe yeah in, uh, heaven a full half hour before the devil knows you're dead yeah um and things like that just come to you yeah but we've been encouraged to keep watching it as we rehearse and as we make the show so that things just keep trickling in yeah and yeah it's 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 lovely going back it get back into it and having such a vested interest mm. And aesthetic wise, what are your favorite parts about this production? You know, from the costumes, the sets, or like the time period? What is it about Peaky Blinders the Rise that you like immersing yourself in? I mean, the costumes are incredible. I costumes, wig, hair, and makeup have just excelled themselves. Mm. Like it's extraordinary what they've created. Um, and all of the, the boys are lucky enough to have um, moss bra suits. So they, they are extremely sharply dressed. Yeah. It makes um, them walk yeah, differently. It, Once they put their suits on, they all just suddenly like stood beautifully and their posture was amazing. And yeah. I'd also say that about the female characters mm. as well, because the, 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 all of the costumes have been makes for every character. So mm. they've been personally made for that person. And then, but like when you get them on, everyone's physicality they'd all been working on it just went a really hundred helped. times more. Really um, I've got an amazing yeah. hat that was made yeah. specially for me. Um, and and the most incredible coat, and they had the fabrics printed for me and and all the jewellery and everything. It's mm. it's real, it really exciting. Detail. The day, yeah, we got to try the clothes and on. Then, and then we can't not mention the set. The set. It's like being a little girl in a it's... doll's house. <laughs> Every single room. It's, there's so much to look at and, and it's all really authentic. And I'm still noticing things. Mm. Like I've been in, we've been on the set for... How many weeks? Three yeah, weeks three now, weeks, yeah. and I'm still going into rooms and going, "What's that? Mm. That's oh, you know." But, but also, there's gameplay. Yeah. That's another element of immersive. Is there's there's stuff that the audience can do. There's safes that they can they can learn to unlock, and there's secret, um, uh, uh like uh, what would you call them? Um, lockups yeah, that lock you have ups. to find how to open things, and there's there's all there's sorts tasks, of yeah. things that you have to you know complete for maybe for Tommy or and that's been really fun to, to play with before everyone else gets a chance to yeah, um, yeah. and during the get during the show giving the audience hints and going well if you try doing this and that then and they get they go oh okay and they, you know off they go and then you see them with bags of money and and it's um yeah that's really exciting that's brilliant and it's it, it's extraordinary like the they've also used bits from the show which is mm. where there's a snug in the stables um which has got the red leather seating that uh, is in the garrison mm. that you see Tommy and um, the Shelby's having their meetings, their private meetings in. Um, so that's quite a sort of fan fan girl yeah. moment when you see these elements from the show. My bag is Grace is the one that she used in the show. Yeah. But there's lots of different things that have actually come from the show as well, mm. which I think mean, she's done an extraordinary job. Um, Rebecca, the designer. And what about the behind the scenes? You know, prior to performing, do you have any like favorite memories from rehearsals? Uh, um. <laughs> we played this we had so much fun. Yeah, we played this game. Um, Tom Muller, the director. I mean, we've never done immersive, have <laughs> no, we? No, we haven't. No. And so he 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 was really keen to give us an idea about what you ha what what it entails mentally when you're when you're it's not just about going on stage, saying the lines and, and hitting your light. You've got to be constantly listening out because all the actors are running on their own tracks and that some scenes are happening simultaneously and then one scene will finish and then an Arab character will come in and, and that's your cue to go yeah. on. And it's all on carefully timed. It's very carefully stitched together. And, and you know, it's, it, it's, the timing is integral. We have watches to make sure we get places on time. So we all, I know I will meet Emma say 8 20 i have to be there at that mm. time for mm. a scene that's when it all kicks off yeah um so we had to have this game where we all had to stand in a circle and put our arms in the air and we'd start off with one track but it's just saying someone else's name in the circle and and then the, and then when we, we'd all mastered that we'd have to then do um running towards them and giving another person a high five and then the other one would be throwing a ball and then there might be um uh, tapping feet or and we'd introduce and so you had all these multiple things running at the same time names catching a ball from someone clicking at someone high-fiving someone and at first it yeah. was it was crazy and really anxiety inducing but actually we, we used to play it every single morning for about 20 minutes to half an hour and it became quite pleasurable in a way it was always you could almost relax into it and not panic and and that's been I really missed that when we stopped playing it 
um, because actually, I, I, it, you, you, it's amazing actually what your brain can take on. It's so intense. And we're all exhausted at the end of two and a half hours. But um, yeah, it, it was really, it was lovely. And it was, again, it was another bonding thing as well. I think, you, you know, learning people's names, learning their characters' names. And yeah, a lot of fun. A lot of fun. We laughed. We did a lot yeah, of it was crazy really improv funny. where we just yes. laughed. Yeah, we, so we would, do, we would be immersive audiences for each other. Um, so that was quite brilliant. There was there was a couple that were just hilarious, like um, you know, gangsters are trying to be, you know be really <laughs> dominant, and all we could do was laugh like like children. At the, yeah, at the we got we got the giggles out for sure. Yeah. But I think that's the thing, isn't it? When you're dealing with such intense and such a dangerous world, I think naturally as a cast you then are really jokey and have a lot of yeah. you know silliness within you. Um, but yeah, talking about the improvisations that we did, we also did some really there was some amazing work in the rehearsal room of as developing the relationships and, you know, reenacting, for example, Tommy and Grace's first date or um, Polly seeing Michael for the first time, um, other characters in the show, which aren't in the TV show, fleshing their relationships out. Mm. Um, and just lots of things, getting to know every, everybody. Mm. And, um, <laughs> just, yeah, we've really become like a real family. Yeah, and you never um, quite knew what each day, we, every day felt like a, a bungee jump. Yeah, for me. I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna have to be brave <laughs> yeah, today really and just... just go with whatever we have to do <laughs> and just not end game and just go. I'm gonna show up, throw myself in full heartedly and just go for it. So yeah, and then you get more. You know, you go. Actually, it wasn't so bad. I think I, you know, <laughs> I could do this. Yeah, and each exactly. day you just get more and more brave. Exactly. Writing. Exactly. Yeah. You just mentioned that neither of you have done immersive shows or been part of an immersive show before, right? Have you watched any immersive shows yourself? Yes. yes. <laughs> Which ones are your favorites? Um, well, I've only seen The Great Gatsby. So um, um, we, 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 we got tickets to go and see Great Gatsby because, because uh, Tom, the director, was involved with that and quite a few of the actors in the show have been in that so it was it was really helpful to get an idea and go oh I see that's what we've that's what we did yeah so, <laughs> yeah I, I, I was when I went to see it before rehearsals and I went to see it during rehearsals I was just I, I, I was amazed I'd never seen anything like it before mm. I, it, it's it was really extraordinary to feel like such a a part of the action and yeah I, I don't know like as an audience member that I mattered and that people wanted to hear what I had to say which was it's de very exciting, really exciting, getting swept up into something. And what I was worried because actually, I know I'm an actor, but I actually get a little bit nervous about audience participation. And yeah, one of too. my questions when we started this was, if you're an audience member who doesn't like to sit on the front row and get involved in stuff, how can immersive work for you? And Tom sort of said that as actors we have to identify the various different um, audience types there are the people who turn up in full costume ready to play really know the whole series. and want to be want to be there at the front putting themselves forward and you can identify those very quickly and then there are people who who all of us want to take a step back and and have a drink and watch it all but not be not have to answer questions or do anything or and and great Gatsby it was lovely because if there were you know I could I could step back and observe and still have a really enjoyable experience and also the idea that you could come back multiple times and see a completely different show each time that was really exciting but also you you know it's you're right in amongst it in in the midst of it and you, you think someone would come in behind you and you'd go oh look it's so and so mm -hmm. so yeah it's, yeah it's quite thrilling really it's quite thrilling multi-sensory yeah and you can have a drink all the way through. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> not as actors, obviously. But no, not as, but the audience. When we went to see The Great Gatsby, we did. Yeah. Cool. And did seeing that experience live in person, did that help you kind of like navigate how you would approach audience members now that you're in an immersive show yourself? Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. I think it was really useful to see people who've been doing it for a really long time. For example, um, Jess, who plays Jordan mm, Baker, amazing. to see how she kind of commanded the audience, but also had a lot of fun with the audience, mm. and just seeing that that kind of line there, um, and her her energy, this this amazing. brilliant actress, she would walk into a room and hold everyone in the palm of her hand, and she had this drive and an energy, and it, and I sort of thought, wow, okay, <laughs> I, I that's that's something that's what I need to go for. Um, 
But it, yeah, it, that really helped. That mm. really helped. And also it's so slick, all the actors in Great Gatsby, yeah. because they've been doing it for a long time. That's a really nice thing to know where we've got to get to. And, I, you know, we're in previews at the moment, so every show is a learning curve. And you learn from it and you go, right, tomorrow I'm going to try this and, and try that. So hopefully by the time we, we open... Um, uh, officially open we'll all be so rehearsed and eventualities would have been practiced and you, you know it, it will I mean already it's a great show but each one is a it's fresh every single night and you but you go tonight I'm going to try this I'm going to try and iron out this crease so mm. yeah last question because we're running out of time here but um if you were to be an audience member of Peaky Blinders Rise how would you personally approach the choices given to you um and that will affect the trajectory of the story wow. oh that's a great that's question. A question I'm going to think of it as an audience member who doesn't know what the three endings entail but I'm going to just say where I would like to be exploring mm -hmm. um I would definitely want to see the extraordinary, um, there's, a, there's a sequence of beautiful movement, which will probably be in the, in the trailer, um, where we ex they, they explore Arthur's PTSD mm -hmm. um, in, a, in a really theatrical mm -hmm. way. I would definitely want to be in the room for that. Mm -hmm. um, and then in terms, of the, in terms of the game, I think I would really enjoy um, sneak, trying to sneak money past other actors past the years yeah and, and making up making up lies as to who i'm what who i'm doing it for whether yeah. i'm working for the shelbys or maybe their enemies i think i'd quite like being a bit of a turncoat yeah um and, and trying to con people <laughs> yeah i like being given you know a message yeah. to give to someone yes. and go yeah. Ooh, i've got to go someone will say go and tell aunt polly that this is happening and and then you have to go and find that character and and um and then sort of quite find them at a sort of quiet moment and say, so, so it's just told me this. I just, or I just had a phone call from Campbell. <laughs> and yeah. and um, that I think those, because that's a real personal tailored experience and uh, you really are, and you are informing the story and you can affect the ending. And then the endings change depending on what the audience are, are championing that night. So yeah, it'd be so thrilling wouldn't it? if you had worked really hard for, for example, Alfie Solomon's, and you'd got him so much money. And then to see Alfie Solomon's win at the end, you just, yeah, that'd be so exciting. And one thing yeah. that Polly says is know that for your ambition, your loyalty and your hard work, you will be remembered. Mm. And most importantly, Tommy Shelby will remember you. And and I and that's that's the that's the truth of it. He really does because mm. yeah, I mean you might yeah. you might get your you name mentioned, get a mention by you, Tommy Shelby yeah. at the end if you're really if extraordinary. You've hard. <laughs> yeah, that's all the questions I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for your time. I'm um, taking Definitely. out to be interviewed by me. Thank you so much. Lovely no to meet you, May. Nice to meet Lovely you. Lovely to meet you. Thank Speak to you soon. Bye bye. bye, -bye.